Good evening. My name is Kobe Olzer. Really excited to be here tonight. I lead the DevOps group in uh, Live Person. You're going to hear today about our great experience with the OpenStack, how we changed the way Live Person consider and decides on its technology, how it took us to the next level in, ter in terms of uh, infrastructure and cost efficiency. To the tech guys here, I'm going to talk about some of the tools that helped us. Maybe something uh, of that you can find uh, useful for yourself as well. So, uh, taking you through the agenda for this talk, I'm going to introduce you to LivePerson, a short introduction just to get you in the context of what LivePerson does and how it applies on the OpenStack. Going to go through the story, how it was uh, in the old days and how it is today. Going to talk about some interesting stuff, what's cooking in our lab, and finally, some tips and tools that you might find uh, useful. I want to start with a, a short introduction about myself. I started my career in 99, been with a live person since uh, 2012. Have uh, married with three kids, and uh, love everything to do with virtualization, automation, big data, and beer. So, live person. Live person been around since uh, 1998. SaaS company even before uh, this word was invented. I think it was called the uh, ASP before. Uh, we have uh, 8,500 customers, 8 out of uh, 10 uh, Fortune 500. And our mission statement is to create meaningful customer connections through our uh, rich uh, multimedia platform, which I'm going to show you an example in the next slide. Here you can see the real Verizon site. You can see a customer lingering in the checkout page. Not sure if you want to go through this is the buy. Our smart system detects that uh, he having maybe uh, some doubts. So um, a Windows pops with an invitation for a live chat with a real a Verizon representative. And if the uh, visitor accepts, then our rich multimedia uh, SaaS platform with a voice, video, and a, a chat uh, taking for the sale incrementing sale, reducing bounds, and uh, helping the customer through the, through the process. Okay, so uh, before we start, uh, a quick uh, uh, show about uh, how a live person infrastructure looks in a nutshell. So we have uh, uh, three tiers. The first tier is the uh, web tier, like any other uh, normal SaaS company. Uh, in the web tier, we have uh, the Apache and uh, uh, HA proxy, and uh, we have some IIS uh, uh, servers for the legacy systems. In the app layer, we have the, uh, mainly the Tomcat and the JBoss. It's uh, all about uh, Java and the Scala for us. And in the data store, we have a bunch of them. We have uh, uh, Cassandra, Vertica, Couchbase, MySQL, uh, Oracle, and Hadoop, especially proud of the Hadoop, who just crossed the uh, one petabyte. So as you can see, the OpenStack is used for us uh, for the first two layers, which are our non-persistent layers. I'm going to talk about what is non-persistent for us in a second. OK, our use case. When we started this June a year and a half ago, we knew that we wanted to go as much as virtualized as possible. So uh, we uh, had uh, minimal requirements. The first requirement was, to find a solution for our non-persistent servers, such as the web tier and the app tier. Um, the, what, by saying non-persistent, I mean that uh, those instances don't need to have any uh, data that we need on them. They can go down, we can bring another round up, so uh, there is no uh, value to the data there. The other uh, use case, the other minimal requirement is to be able to scale to thousands of VMs with commodity servers, we had a lot of physical servers, and we wanted to reuse those servers with the OpenStack. And the last one, we wanted to transform our infrastructure to platform as a service style. So before, before we started with the OpenStack, uh, if we wanted to deploy a new service, we needed our operations uh, to work with uh, VMware or physical servers, it took a lot of time and money, and then we got a new service um, up and running. It's not that the VMware is the best uh, solution, on the contrary. 
But when we started, when we, wanted, uh, uh, when we knew that we wanted to go to uh, uh, as much as virtualized as possible, we had a very small footprint of VMware. And uh, looking at our minimal requirement and uh, uh, the fact that we had a lot of physical servers uh, already in place, uh, the OpenStack was uh, the best cost-efficient cost uh, option for us. So today, we were managed to uh, bring our infrastructure uh, to become a building block. Very easy with the uh, REST API uh, scripts using Puppet and OpenStack. We are able to uh, build a, a cloud of, uh, of uh, services in a matter of minutes and even maybe seconds. We have new services uh, running uh, almost uh, new services every day. So in the old days, as you can see here, we used to have uh, most of our servers physical and some uh, a footprint of uh, VMware with uh, none, of course, OpenStack. And today, most of our servers are uh, OpenStack, some VMware, the same didn't change, and the physical servers, which are mostly for the data store and, of course, for the OpenStack hosts. OK, jumping in into the uh, components and architecture, as you can see here, we mainly use uh, our uh, KVM as the hypervisor. We use uh, MySQL as uh, our database. Our uh, distribution is uh, Ubuntu distribution. And uh, we started uh, a long time ago with uh, Diablo distribution and uh, uh, moved uh, from there, started, went to production with the SX, and today we are running uh, Folsom and Grizzly on the staging environment. Uh, we use local disks. Like I mentioned before, we, we use uh, our services as, uh, uh, mainly as non-persistent. So local disks work for us. We are looking at uh, solutions for uh, uh, distributed storage, such as uh, uh, Ceph, but it uh, uh, will come only uh, later uh, next year. We are uh, managed, we are managing everything with a Puppet end-to-end, -end, and uh, uh, starting from, uh, uh, from bringing new, new servers up to new services up in production, up and running and ready to serve. We have uh, uh, four production data centers, two in North America, two in Europe, one staging, and uh, another one in uh, uh, Dev, two, two other uh, small uh, data centers. This is a real snapshot from our production, uh, OpenStack. As you can see here, we mainly use uh, the CentOS 6.4 and uh, uh, the Windows uh, 2003 images. And in flavors, we have a lot of flavors, but we use uh, mainly the uh, two cores and four cores with the four gigabyte RAM. It's also possible to, uh, of course, to use uh, much bigger flavors. Like you can see here, we also use uh, 16 cores and uh, 15 gigabyte of RAM, but uh, um, uh, so we don't need to be afraid and they can use uh, uh, much more if you need. OK, so uh, this graph is very interesting. Here you can see uh, the whole life person story, in fact. You can see here that we started in mid-2012, built our confidence slowly since then. And uh, you can see that in uh, mid-2013, we got to a decision where we are confident enough with the OpenStack. So we moved everything else to OpenStack. We P2V'd, we V2V'd, everything we had left to OpenStack. And since then, just continue growing with the OpenStack. We have, uh, four, uh, we have uh, 1,400 uh, instances with more than 6,000 cores. OK, another interesting stuff with the OpenStack that we do, uh, we use it for our QA and dev environment. So um, in our lab, as you can see here, uh, we are planning to uh, provision with the NOC uh, using Foreman. Foreman is a one-stop shop application for us to provision new services, to provision new instances, to use it uh, with, uh, uh, to provision new instances even in EC2, and uh, to deploy uh, new services using Puppet. Um, another very interesting tool for us is the M Collective. Of course, like we are Puppet users, so M Collective come naturally to us. With the M Collective, we orchestrate uh, our clusters. We use the, uh, the plugins out of the box with them collective to manage the, the data centers. 
but uh, writing our own plugins to each service, uh, we uh, uh, use it to orchestrate the, the clusters. Another very interesting thing that is going on in the lab is uh, auto scaling. We are looking at uh, heat and silometer um, to, and also scalar, which is not uh, written here, to uh, auto scale. Looks very promising, and of course, it's, it's part of the, of, the, the, of the Havana distribution, which is going to be much easier to implement. So, like I mentioned, um, the OpenStack is also used in our R&D environment. It's, a, it's, a, it's very dear to our R&D because uh, um, they can get their own quota uh, to provision VMs. They can set their own private load balancers. They have the same keys and metadata deployed on all services, and they don't need big budgets to for, and settle for few VMs like they used to uh, do uh, in the past. Okay, some tips and tools as I promised. Okay, the first one I get to ask, I get uh, uh, this question a lot. How do they get my management organization to support? Uh, so, uh, it's, uh, uh, we started very, very small. Uh, we started with uh, a couple of servers in a QA and dev environment. And uh, then we took some servers uh, into production, for servers that uh, uh, were uh, uh, due to uh, decommission. We started a new cluster, and we started very, very small with uh, uh, not important services, like uh, uh, maybe some uh, alpha uh, services for new, uh, for, uh, new services. So uh, uh, starting small, beating our confidence slowly, but surely uh, got us uh, until here. And of course, the, the, the cost efficiency was, uh, was a big part of the picture when uh, talking to the management and getting them to support us. Another tip is, uh, like I mentioned before, the uh, Foman uh, combined with Puppet and M Collective. We have a, a good experience with it in the lab. Um, it's, uh, I'm not going to go through, of course, uh, each technology right now, but uh, uh, using the Foman uh, to, for a one-stop shop to provision new services, to deploy to, for a Puppet dashboard, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, proven to be a, a very good asset. And last, uh, when, if you're thinking of starting a new deployment with the OpenStack, or even you have an existing one, I would suggest looking at the filter scheduler for the soft provisioning. It's something that uh, proven for us uh, very useful to, uh, to look deep into the soft provisioning and uh, figure out exactly what fit for us, uh, how to uh, soft provision, because it's not uh, straightforward. You can, uh, you can, of course, out of the box, uh, use uh, memory, uh, disk space, and the CPU soft provision, but you can uh, do it uh, with uh, uh, much more uh, details uh, for your organization and your needs. Okay, to summarize, um, like you saw before, one, uh, OpenStack is, is uh, uh, running uh, its uh, core business on 100% of the services, at least one server and uh, up to 100%. And it's also been used in our staging, dev, and QA environment. So if live person could do it, I think that uh, uh, many more companies can do it as well. If there is one thing I want you to remember from this session, is, uh, uh, is this. And uh, hopefully um, our use case, live person use case, uh, can convince most of, the, of you to try OpenStack in production and enjoy the cost-effective solution. Thank you very much.